Samantha Neukbauer. Welcome to Short Story Boudoir. I'm Katie Gafford. Excited to be here for another episode. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about Anton Chekhov's story, The Darling. Um, on our channel, we look at one story every episode because everyone has time to read one short story. And people want to discuss the story after they read it. So this is a place that you can do that. Um, did I forget anything? No, I think we can roll right in. Okay, great. Um, so this is actually the oldest story, uh, or the most classic story that we've discussed on the channel so far. The story was written in 1899, so wow. it just got under that century mark. <laughs> <laughs> just had two centuries ago. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, and it's the story of Olenka. And Olenka starts out as this young woman who is in love or infatuated with the theater director or manager who is boarding in her family house. Yeah. Um, and the story moves swiftly through time. Um, it ends up being a story about how Olenka falls repeatedly in love with people um, in an obsessive way, one after the other. So we start with the theater director who she marries. Um, and then after he passes away, um, she marries a, a lumber merchant. And then after he passes away, um, she takes up with a, a veterinarian surgeon. Um, and then later, even his son from another marriage, she starts to kind of yeah. bestow this obsessive love on. Um, and actually from the beginning, we're told kind of about this trait of Alenka because we're told that she had a father that she was very much enamored with, um, a school teacher, an aunt, a pupil. So this is not something that's exclusive to kind of amorous feelings yeah. or even mother-son feelings. Um, yeah, yeah, it's sort of built in as a established part of her personality from right. the beginning. Mm -hmm. and that's really one of the things I'm most interested okay. in talking about. Mm -hmm. um, if you're good with your summary. I'm good with my summary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's, it's exactly like you described. It's sort of like a pattern where she falls in love and has mm -hmm. all these different infatuations. And so on the one hand, it's a pretty straightforward mm -hmm. story. But I think one of the thorniest things yeah. about it or most interesting things about it is whether or not Olenka is likable. Yeah. I know that's kind of a, <laughs> I don't know, like a controversial topic right. where you're not supposed to talk about character right. likability, but I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, I found that on the surface, like describing a character who right. is obsessed with all these men and kind of adopts their interests mm -hmm. and doesn't know who she is without <laughs> them, like sounds kind of intolerable. Right. But I found that reading her, I liked her. Like mm -hmm. I, was, I like thought right. she was interesting. Um, she's often described as sort of like wanting this soulful experience of being mm -hmm. filled with other people's right. interests. And it seems to come from a very deep place mm -hmm. to me, but I'm, I'm curious if you felt the same way. Yeah, I think, um, you know, so much about Olenka and whether you can kind of tolerate her um, seems to do with positionality, right? So I was at such a distance from her that I felt absolutely sympathetic towards yeah. her but even more than that i just enjoyed her right yeah. i mean yeah. she was enthusiastic in like her obsessions so that made her like fun to read um but i will say that you know i've been on i've been in other positions with an olenka type yeah, right and sure. i think like in in real life where yeah. you know you watch maybe a friend kind of do this and it's like, where did my friend go? Or you've been in a situation where you feel someone doing this to you. And um, it that annoyed me rather than feeling powerful. Yeah. And I think we see that in this story too, because some of the men have like this positive reaction and some don't, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is interesting texture yeah. in and of itself. Like mm -hmm. I was um, interested in all the ways that the story kind of offers variations mm -hmm. on this theme right. a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, I do think it's such a good point about mm -hmm. narrative distance, because mm -hmm. I think you're right. Obviously, if this is a real person in my life, right. I feel differently. But maybe even if it was narrated in first person by her best friend, right. it would feel really different mm -hmm. too. Um, but yeah, I think there was something almost, yeah, entertaining, mm -hmm. kind of like you yeah. alluded to about mm -hmm. it. Um, and also, like, there is sort of some tension in like, well, what will she get her come up right. for this or or not? And, sure. and that was interesting for me in the story. Yeah, and I think we're used to kind of this, you know, this selfless person being depicted as a tragic character. And there's definitely tragedy in this story. Um, 
but it felt so different than you know a lot of the protagonists that I read today that are contemporary that you know most of the answers are within right like yeah. spend time with yourself and you yeah. know um you'll kind of learn your true self and these kind of things whereas she's exhibiting something that is you know finding answers outside in yeah. others you're right that it's, was refreshing about right? it right like i think it felt so like anti-modern right it's like taboo in a way yeah but there was yeah there was something <laughs> so um <laughs> Charming, about, right? Like, yeah, lost in other people, people right? Yeah. yeah, and something like almost like deliciously humble about a character that's like, yeah, I, I have nothing to offer. Yeah, about. right. Like you I know? think when we meet her, it's like she was sitting on the porch thinking of nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah. maybe there's room for those people yeah, too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that talks me to something that I want to talk about. Um, which is, I read that James Joy said that um, Chekhov's stories don't have a beginning, middle, and end, um, and instead follow the flow of life. Um, I was wondering, do you agree with that in terms of this story? Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because I can think of maybe a couple other Chekhov mm -hmm. stories that maybe that would feel more true mm -hmm. for, yeah. but I felt like the story really did have a clear beginning, <laughs> middle, and mm -hmm. end. Um, and, and not that I can't see the flow of life right, in the story. Sure, like yeah. we do begin, it's very slice of life even beginning with mm -hmm. that opening where she's just sort of like thinking right. vacuously mm -hmm. um, on her porch. But um, the structure of it with the sort of three lovers and then the, right. with the fourth son, mm -hmm. was, well, you kind of call them four I lovers, think so, yeah. um, mm -hmm. has a very like fairy tale mm -hmm. feel to it. Mm -hmm. And I guess that sort of makes me feel like it has a very structured feel. Yeah. Like it really like picks up when the mm -hmm. inciting incident is kind of getting married to this first mm -hmm. theater manager right. and then you're kind of waiting to see it escalate from there mm -hmm. and then I think once we shift our attention towards the son that feels mm -hmm. like a, a change right it's no right. longer like a husband that she's mm -hmm. doting on or trying to yeah. absorb it's this boy so that really gave me like the feeling of okay we're like coming right. down into a new place yeah and it feels almost climatic in that sense yeah. right um and again, it sort of has a dustiness to it because it's like, oh, like actually the child is like the co correct depository for this love. Yeah. You know, not the, the fellow adult, but like kind of the pure innocence of the child, like can absorb this like obsessive love in this way. Um, but then of course, um, it doesn't really work out like that because the child sort of <laughs> finds her annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Great. It's great. Yeah. yeah really I think it's, it's like, it's kind of such an, like, an avant-garde ending yeah. in a way of that final mm -hmm. line of, like, the child dreaming mm -hmm. and having that kind of, like, right. not to do with anything. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Final exclamation. Mm -hmm. And I love how that just sort of underscores the ultimate, like, meaninglessness a little yeah. bit. Um, so, but yeah, I agree. It's <laughs> sort of like the story gives you this, like, ending and then pulls the rug out a little bit like okay it's not yeah. like all as grand as that in a way right and i it makes me too uh it makes me wonder like would joyce say that like if he had the knowledge of everything that came after you know in, yeah. the, in the later 1900s and beyond because it does feel like so many stories now of course like postmodernism, etc like just start and end and totally. are all middle or you know yeah so and it's, it's also like, compared. You know, maybe compared to joyce's work yes it's like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah it's interesting <laughs> um yeah for sure yeah i mean i i think like it's interesting the extent to which the story stays zoomed in on Alinka and mm -hmm. her experience and you know again like it feels tightly structured in that right. way mm -hmm. but I also do feel like the larger context of the world creeping in mm -hmm. a little bit and I'm interested in the sort of like plot device of the fact that all of these husbands like go off and die kind of yes. off screen mm -hmm. there's a lot of like right. leaving right in this um story and like people we were talking a little bit off camera about mm -hmm. how like far <laughs> distances people are traveling mm -hmm. and the Russia depicted here so mm -hmm. anyway I'm just curious if that was interesting to you yeah. or like what you thought about the context of all the coming and going whether that felt more like just plot device mm -hmm. or whether there was like a metaphorical aspect right. there i felt um 
I felt it was interesting in that usually I associate like Russian stories with war yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you know none of these men were soldiers right yeah. who went away so they all went away for these different reasons um I think that it didn't read like a plot device to me yeah. in that I believed it um but I'm also someone who's one of like kind of life hot takes is that I believe X always begets X. So like if you, like success begets success, like failure begets more failure yeah. typically. Um, pain, you know, love, um, kind of a what you put out you get yeah. sort of situation um, in a little bit of a fatalist way. But I feel <laughs> like so she has this like track record yeah. of like loss. And like for me, that's believable. <laughs> And she attracts men yeah. who are going to end up yeah, like they exactly. leave. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I think there's um, <laughs> there's something to that. Yeah. There's. I mean, it's weird because on the one hand, the story feels like it could be in a register that's kind of like I keep using the word fairy tale like, yeah. or but it has this sort of sense of like, okay, like mm -hmm. really, does she like really right. have no opinions except right. for those of her mm -hmm. lovers and like does do all of them like really go off and die mm -hmm. one after another right. um but like at the same time it does feel very believable like mm -hmm. i do think you're right like it is kind of a a thing that could happen to a person right you kind of are destined to live this kind of life and mm -hmm. i do think i don't know the fact that um all of her lovers like their jobs are such a big part right. of the story mm -hmm. is interesting to me like yeah. that feels very grounding you mm -hmm. know like these are Absolutely. all like men who she's not just kind of like randomly opining on their right. life views she's like oh yeah this is what's really good about being a better <laughs> right. you know or like <laughs> local theater <laughs> you know it's, it was really Lumber. interesting yeah. yeah no and i think so too like and some of this is definitely projection but i mean if you look at kind of uh you know things like diseases and uh, you know industrial accidents and stuff life was like harsher yeah. in a way then and this story it would be odd and a little bit more unbelievable you know if there was some suburban person in bethesda you know yeah. dc or whatever who is you know has married three office workers right. and they <laughs> died <Yeah. laughs> But, you know, in the late 1800s right. in Russia, yeah. in the Russian Empire, I'm, like, willing to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's sort of, like, basic and obvious, but that yeah. is one of the pleasures of reading a story Absolutely. that was written more than 100 years the ago. The stakes are really high. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yeah, for sure. Um, do we have another question? Um, oh, yeah, there was a line you wanted to call out. Oh, right. Okay, so... Um, so one of my, uh, one of the, in the interesting lines for me was this one. Um, it's in the final third of the story and it's everything in her life was so transparent. Um, so I'm curious how you interpreted this and also on a craft level, was this one of those moments where you thought it was the narrator describing her life or was this Olenka thinking? Yeah, it's interesting because I think for me that line in this question kind of goes back to the likability thing and maybe mm -hmm. why I'm so yeah. charmed by her in some mm -hmm. ways because I do think there's a way in which um like her like she as a character I think is really interested in like exposing her soul on the surface <laughs> right. kind mm -hmm. of like she yeah. is again like really obsessed with these men and mm -hmm. she's not trying to like hide that in way right like, no. that's like Mm -hmm. she's like fully inhabiting right. that right and mm -hmm. like that's the like life she's living outwardly mm -hmm. as well as inwardly right. um so I think that's what I read into the transparent right. part of that but then in terms of that like is that interiority is that the narrator mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of collapsing mm -hmm. in this story where it feels like I ultimately read it as the narrator faithfully representing what she is right. thinking mm -hmm. but that it is in the narrator's voice right but I think it's moments like that that make me feel like the narrator likes her too in a way I think so and I too. think that's what helps yeah. ally me to her right yeah I think that um the it doesn't actually matter my question because I believe that she's living her life transparently like yeah. I believe like that Olenka would think this about herself and I believe that the the narrator knows this truly about herself yeah. um and I just think that that is is such a it's such a gift to feel warm towards your characters right um 
I read too um, that I think that this was Tolstoy's favorite oh, story really? oh, of cool. Chekhov, like out of his 300 or oh, something. Cool. Um, and I wonder how much that had to do with it, right? Um, it is a really warm story. It is a warm story. Yeah. Despite multiple deaths and, you know, kind of a, a personality list. Yeah. Protagonist. Yeah, yeah, it's like, even though the story doesn't shy away from right. you, the like, mm -hmm. again, unlikable or sort of like off putting things right. about her, it does feel like it's very interested in yeah. her. I think that what it teaches me in a writer way is about that warmness and how much, at least as a reader, I like that in a way. Yeah. Um, and it's not, there's nothing like hostile towards like any of these characters. Yeah. Um, which seems to always like be one of those commandments of writing. What is like so, it's so, um, it's almost imperceptible when people don't do it unless you're looking whether or not they're doing it. I think that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. and I think probably because a lot of what might bring somebody to the page is almost like a sense of like, retribution yeah or like anger or revenge yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and i think the hope is that when you do actually like end up on the page um right. you are sort of able to examine that person more fully or right. like think about other angles and it's probably not an accident that this um story is like one of the stories that george saunders picked oh, for his okay. mm -hmm. kind of book about um the class he teaches on okay. Russian writers mm -hmm. and like one of the things saunders says mm -hmm. in the book i think he said it in a lot of different youtube mm -hmm. um, yeah. videos too is like there's this thing about being a writer where you're bringing like once you're on the page like you're bringing the very best version of yourself mm -hmm. to the page and you're hoping that the reader will meet you as the very best yeah. version of their self, which doesn't mm -hmm. always be the most virtuous right, sure. or moral version, but just right. like the, the best version of you. And mm -hmm. that's the pretty thing about that in this Chekhov that's really story. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true too. And I, I mean, I think also like there's wisdom in that, yeah. right? And I think that one of the reasons that I read at least is to become more wise. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that yeah. that is not um something that should be like a shameful word to say as yeah. like a goal to be a more wise person you know yeah, so i like that a lot i think this this story i think does make me wiser to the kind of person that has this personality trait yeah. and also um to you know the different degrees that this personality trait shows up in all of us yeah you know absolutely. so yeah that like empathy right who hasn't been someone who has just been so enamored by someone at some point where you're like wow like everything about them is interesting yeah or, or you just wake <laughs> up one day and you're like oh like turns out i watch a lot of football now because well, my husband right, does exactly. that exactly is that something i ever would have done right you know um yeah right. not to yeah. talk about myself no. um, <laughs> Favorite one. Yes, please, please. Okay, <laughs> so um, one of mine uh, is kind of um, it's related to this conversation I think about okay. the like narrative distance mm -hmm. and the narrator versus yeah. interiority. So the line is you see, for instance, a bottle or the rain or the peasant. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of them? You can't tell and you couldn't, even if they paid you a thousand rubles. Mm -hmm. And this is a description of how she feels when she's like not attached to somebody and yeah. doesn't know what mm -hmm. opinion to have. So she's just oh, like interesting. walking around and she's like, you know, you see a bottle right? or a peasant, you don't know what to think. And I like um, this line because again, I think this is like her experience I think the narrator is very close to her right. in this moment, mm -hmm. um, kind of seeing the world through her eyes. Mm -hmm. And then I also, so I like that, and I like the sort of run-on feeling of it, mm -hmm. um, how yeah. it sort of like, it almost like evokes this panic, like, yeah. and, and you can't, no. you can't like tell, and you couldn't, right. even if they paid you, you mm -hmm. couldn't know what to mm -hmm. think, and I like the sense of desperation that me comes Me too. There. It also makes me think about how there's a certain segment of the internet and kind of in the literary world too, that is mourning like the unmediated past, right? Yeah. Like where people like had their own ideas about a book or a movie before they went online, you know?
But I think that this kind of line shows that people have always yearned for mediation, <laughs> yeah. right? It's such a good <laughs> like, In like her way, it's like through men who maybe yeah. know more or working outside the home, you know. Um, but there's evidence of this, you know, Such back in the late 1800s as well. People, <laughs> people call out for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let me share my, yeah. my final line. Um, so this is when she is with her second husband, the lumber merchant. Um, and, and it says, she felt as if she had been dealing in lumber forever so long. <laughs> that the most important and essential thing in her life was lumber. There was something touching and endearing in the way she pronounced the words beam, joist, plank, stave, lap, gun carriage, clamp. I just it's love so, it. It's so it's funny. funny. It's so good. It's, it's so really good. good. I mean, it did also, and I wonder about this, like make me very interested in lumber. In these sure. words, right? I was like, lumber i would like to know more about that I know. you know and how you think oh i, I never would unless maybe i encountered a exactly person. how lovely that she appreciates yeah, that. Exactly. yeah and it was interesting too because the first one is the theater director and that felt much more like in the wheelhouse of like people yeah. i know and hang out with i think for both of us and like but lumber felt like a little bit more earthy totally. <laughs> you know totally i know <laughs> veterinarian I, I know it's so good it's so um yeah this is a great story yeah. it was nice to read a, mm -hmm. a classic and Absolutely. I think we like kind of bouncing around back and forth so yeah highly recommend it yeah if you've read the story tell us if you like it or not or what is your favorite checkoff story yeah absolutely mm -hmm. we'll see you next time bye